Hi there, it's Ben Housel here, and here we're going to have a look at how we create this duotone effect in Final Cut Pro 10. So this involves a couple of different steps. We're going to have a look at how we use one of the built-in effects, and we're also going to have a look at how we work with color correction, um, increasing the contrast to change the way that the, the duotone is working and how it looks on screen. So let's dive in and begin to, to build this effect. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do here is just delete the clips which have the effect on it already. So now we have these four clips without any effect and we'll also have a look at how we can copy and paste the effect from one clip to multiple clips after we've created it so we don't need to repeat the work that we're doing. We're going to work on this uh, clip first of all of this surfer carrying a surfboard with two dogs walking along the beach and the first step we're going to go ahead and do is to open up the color board in order just to push the contrast of this a little bit more and we'll see how this works when we actually add the duotone effect so i'm going to bring up the inspector um, on the right hand side here so if we go to window show in workspace and bring up the inspector or command of four then now we're going to come in and show the color board so i'm going to come to my magic wand here in the middle and go to show color board and the shortcut for this is command and six you don't need to go to the effects panel um, down here on the right hand side to add the color correction. You can simply add it by holding down command and tapping six and it will apply that to your clip. So here we're going to go into the exposure. So you may be in the, the color options here. Just come along these tabs at the top here and we're going to pull down the, the blacks and increase the highlights. And we'll just find where we're happy with the, the midtone. And that's just going to increase the contrast of our image a little bit so you can see if we come back to our effects here we can see a before and after of what we've done to that clip and we can modify this at any point in time once we've done this we're going to go ahead and add the duotone effect which in the effects on the right hand side here is under the color options and we're using this colorize option here so i'm going to pull this onto my clip and at the moment, we don't get that kind of full duotone effect simply because the intensity of this effect is not turned right up. So in order to get this effect, making this image the dark red and the red, we just need to come across to our inspector now and ramp up that intensity. So you can see we get this very, very intense dark red and light red now. So essentially, we're remapping the black to a certain color and we're remapping the white to a certain color as well. So it's mapping the, the whites to this red and the blacks to this darker red. So if we come into our options here and um, we can change this color now to any color that we want. So we can remap our black to a lighter color, which gives this kind of negative effect, which is quite cool. So if you want to create a kind of inverted negative effect, that shows a specific color, um, or you might want a kind of psychedelic look where you offset the, the red against a crazy green, then you can come in here to set this up. We're gonna go for the dark colors for a, a lighter blue at the moment. And then for the whites, we're gonna come in here and we're gonna go for a lighter yellow or green color. So you can see we get this nice duotone effect of those colors. And if we come in here and bring the colors very close together, so if I pick an orange for this or something, you can see we get this nice subtle duotone effect. Now there's some side effects of creating this duotone. We've remapped our whites and our blacks to these two different colors, and that means it's really easy to overlay text over the top of this. So if we quickly demonstrate, I'm gonna come into my titles here, and we'll just scroll down here to my basic titles. I'll pull this onto my timeline. And now if we come across um, to the type, we'll just type in duotone, and I'm gonna increase the size of my type. And you can see that because we've got this yellow and red color behind that type, um, we're getting a nice level of contrast between the foreground and background. We could increase that, so we could come down here and add something like a drop shadow to our type. Now the default drop shadow kind of gives this very hard edge to the drop shadow and I prefer to have a slightly lighter option. So I'm gonna hit show here and then just change the blur here, pull that up and turn the distance right down and we'll just drop the opacity. So essentially what we're doing here is just giving that text a tiny bit of pop from the background. Um, and if we come across here, we can see that the drop shadow is letting it pop out, but also keeping the, the color, so the yellows and the reds are coming through too. So now we have this nice effect. So there's a couple of other things to consider here now. So we'll come back in now to our effects and into our color board. And you can see here that if we 
pull down our shadows or increase our highlights. We're essentially increasing or decreasing the intensity um, of those colors so we can kind of change the midpoint of where the colors sit in order to change the way the colors are working. If we pull the blacks up and the lights down, we get this much more muted effect. Again, which can be quite nice for overlaying text with a textured video background that creates a very subtle effect. So I'm gonna pull back my blacks and my lighter colors. And one thing to keep an eye on as you're doing this is just to take a peek at the video scope. So in your, in your monitor in the middle here, come to view and show video scopes and just make sure in here that we're not coming over 100% for any of this uh, video. So we may want to modify the, the master exposure so we can bring down the exposure and then that will still allow us to kind of modify these uh, two options. And because we're pulling closer towards the blacks, we're getting more of that magenta, that pink color in there. So you can see here with the color board and the colorize, you've got a nice level of control over the colors that you use in your duotone effect. I'm just gonna hide my sidebar on the, the left-hand side here and my browser, just so we get all of these options up a little bit bigger. So one other thing to note as well is the order in which these uh, behave. So if I drag my color correction below my colorize option, then it's flipping the order of those. So essentially my colorize is happening before the order of this. And the easiest way of demonstrating that is to come into your color board. And if I go to saturation here and pull down the saturation for my color effect, you can see that nothing changes. And that's essentially because the color correction is happening here, but then we're colorizing that image. If I now pull my color correction below colorize, you can see that it will be a grayscale image, which actually looks quite cool as well. So we'll pull this back up. We also have the option to use image masks on here as well. So we could add shape masks for any one of our effects that we're using here, which means that we could create some interesting kind of blends between the duotone and this, at the moment, grayscale image because we dropped down the, the saturation here, but we could also bring back in some of those regular colors there as well. So you can see we have a lot of different options for, for playing with the way that our effects stack up here as well. So I'm gonna come to my shape mask here and just highlight that and press backspace to remove it. We're just gonna stick with this for the moment. Now, if we added a second colorize effect here, we can use that shape mask to good effect. So if I add the shape mask here, you can see I can blend between one colorize effect and I'll turn the intensity up here and then change the colors. So now we're moving between these two different colorize effects, which provides a, a kind of neat blend um, between those two different effects. So we can create some interesting effects there. Now, lastly, I want to look at how we can move these effects from one clip to another. So if I select my video here. I'm going to delete the title for the moment. Um, if I select my video here, I'm going to go to edit and copy. And then I can select all three of these last clips here just by dragging a marquee all the way around them and then going to edit and paste attributes. And now that will allow me to paste different attributes to those different videos. Now I've changed some of the transform options for these videos. I don't wanna paste those. So I'm just gonna check transform and uncheck it to take all those options off. I've also got some spatial and retiming options on the first video. So actually I'm gonna to go to video attributes and turn all those on so that I can then turn them all off. And now I can just check the color effects and we can scroll down and see that it's just the color effects that are gonna be added. And then for the audio attributes, I can just check here twice and it will turn off any audio attributes that would have been pasting onto those second clips, which is none at the moment, but you can copy and paste selectively the different attributes that you have. So we'll hit paste here and you can see we get some interesting blends of the different effects. The positioning is not quite the same um, for this second layer that I've added because of the scale of the videos. So I'm just gonna select my shape mask and I can tweak the the location of it for these subsequent videos. Or I could press backspace to remove that shape mask or to remove the entire colorize effect. So we move back to just having that one original colorize effect. So I'm gonna to come to this last clip and we'll just go to the shape mask and I'm gonna move this across. And these two red circles 
um, indicate the, the blend between the shape mask, the inside of the shape mask, and the rest of the image or the other image in the background. So as I make this wider, you can see that gradient between those two images becomes broader. So we can have a real subtle blend between these two different colorize effects. So if we come back here, you can see we get some very cool colorize effects. We've got a nice level of control over them with the color correction and the, with the color correction and the two colorize options. And really the rest is up to you to go ahead and have a play around. Make sure you're keeping an eye on your level so you're not going above 100%. And sometimes if you do pop above 100%, we're not even close on any of these, um, then you may want to just drop on the broadcast safe option, especially if you're gonna be authoring out to DVD or Blu-ray. You'll want to make sure that the broadcast safe pulls those white levels down to below 100%. So I hope that's been useful. There's some very cool effects you can create using this effect in Final Cut Pro 10. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave any comments below suggesting any new tutorials or asking any questions and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.